Hello, Jamalov here and this is the beginner's guide to Dwarf Fortress where I'm building an example fortress showing how to build a fortress, how to help your dwarf survive. In the previous episode I received my first migrant wave, in my case 7 new dwarves, so the fortress now has 14. During the first year before the supply caravan arrives, the migrant waves are random. You can get anything between 2 or 10 dwarves. And uh, then in the upcoming years, after the caravan has visited the fortress, hopefully made, made its way back to the mountain homes, uh, spreading the news of our success, the amount of migrants, while it's still somewhat random, is affected by the created wealth of the fortress. The kind of exact mechanics there is are a bit unclear, but uh, more wealth, more migrants, kind of the, the fortress attracting uh, migrants from the from the mountain homes. But anyway, it is now a third of Galena, late summer, the last month of summer. I have about four months before the caravan arrives, and uh, in this video I will take a look at my migrants. Uh, through dwarf therapist, so you can see uh, how I uh, how I process migrant waves when they when they arrive. With dwarf therapist, as soon as you get the message some migrants have arrived, even that some of those dwarfs are still outside the map, you can uh, connect uh, dwarf therapist into the game and see all the all the migrants. And uh, Again, I'm using the Splinter Mind Attributes clone of Dwarf Therapist, uh, which can show me the different attributes. But uh, even with the normal Dwarf Therapist, we can group the Dwarves in various waves, ways, including migration waves. And uh, here we can see that here are the seven Dwarves I received now in the summer of the year 251. If I don't group them at all, at all, they will be all in a, all one single pile. But so let's take a look at the migration wave. This is what I do always when I receive a new new migration wave. I first disable all the labors that they are not uh, not highly skilled in. Uh, the skill of two is kind of a borderline. But um, actually, let's go as far as disable everything. Well, I know I this fellow can keep the setting bones and dressing wounds because he's uh, well she's more skilled than the, than the dwarf I have now and uh, after I have done this and uh, disabled all the labors I uh, all the labors I don't want to keep on I will uh, I will commit the changes and then I start looking at their uh, at the skills they have and see if they will take over or start doing that labor. And uh, here I see I could at this moment uh, go for nothing, but I still want to see who are the new new dwarves. So here in stone detailing, this fellow as a great engraver is obviously the one who should do this job. So uh, I will disable the labor from my mason who didn't really do that job, but uh, I will uh, however uh, disable it now so that this uh, new guy will take care of it. I haven't done any stone detailing or engraving, but this fellow can do it with uh, amazing creativity. Any attribute over 2000 is uh, somewhat exceptional. Mm. So this this fellow is really, really good for engraving when I, when I start doing that. Well, anyway, uh, I will look at the attributes and those a bit later because that is uh, only here in this, uh, this special version of Dwarf Therapist that can show them. The animal training, um, I think I will let my... Um, well, actually it doesn't, doesn't really matter. This fellow can take care of it. He won't be doing it uh, eventually. I hope to get someone, someone who's actually skilled in it or just pick one of the migrants eventually to do this. Animal training is not, not a job I want to, want to get done here. Uh, early on, or it's not, not that critical. 
still uh, looking at the skills of the new migrants, as I already mentioned this uh, Bone Doctor and Moon Dresser, I will still keep the laborers enabled for my uh, for my expedition leader, just in case I, I do get wounded, but uh, I'd need to get the hospital set up and all things like that before that's actually relevant. I got this uh, great cheese maker, so obviously I will uh, disable cheese making from my from my chef, although I won't be doing much milking and cheese making uh, so that this would really matter, so this fellow can easily do some other job in addition to uh, being a something of a doctor. Okay, there are no other uh, very very high skills here, I will commit those changes. Uh, I see that this fellow is can do plant processing, he can also cook, he has a, some butchery skill, but uh, none of those things really matter. What I do next is uh, here in the first migration wave, I want to find someone who will do stone crafting. I will actually disable it from my carpenter already. I want someone to take care of furnace operating because I will soon start start mining for ores. So far I've been mining to create space for the dwarves. So I want someone to take care of furnace operating who is not my, uh, my mechanic. And also I want someone to take care of wood burning, just in case I don't find any other means of, uh, of fuel. So uh, let's take a look at those. And this is where uh, one can use these uh, attributes and this uh, role interface that uh, this version of Dwarf Therapist offers. These numbers here are kind of a ranking or suitability for the task based on the attributes that the labor or skill uses. So if I look at um, furnace operating we can see here that uh, it uh, uses analytical ability, strength, toughness, endurance. Many of these things are uh, are common for uh, common for uh, many many tasks. But if we look at this fellow, who is the most suitable for uh, for furnace operating from these dwarves, we look at his stats. He has amazing memory and analytical ability. I kind of I think he would go into waste in furnace operating, even that, uh, with that memory. He could do a whole, could do a whole lot of things. There's also a rating here. Uh, what uh, what roles this uh, this fellow is most suited for? And then this, uh, there can, you can create custom roles. These are the ones that come with this version. Okay, what about this fellow? This fellow is mighty and good creativity. Most suited for a role of a liar. <laughs> oh. Well, he has furnace operating quite high. I think this uh, Ast fellow can, can be my... Uh, furnace operator. Let's put that there. Then let's go see wood burning. And then I will I will possibly need to adjust these later on if uh, if these these don't hit that well and then I need to uh, need to adjust. Okay, it doesn't doesn't matter that much. Okay, this fellow can be my wood burner. Or Dom. He's also the butcher guy. Mm. Okay, so that and then stone crafting. I might need to adjust these, but uh, but let's see. Stone crafting. Kivish. Kivish has a nice creativity. Although he is the skilled skilled fellow in record keeping, and if I recall, this fellow also had. Uh, yeah, he's skilled in hammer. I haven't looked at military yet, but this fellow is the only one with any weapon skill. Um, so I kind of want to, kind of want to think about that. I don't want to make this fellow the stone crafter, even that uh, he is the most suited for it. I will either keep him 
in record keeping, draining some stats and uh, maybe even make this fellow a miner because he's very likely to be in my initial military with uh, with these stats, nice ag agility, nice strength, toughness, all, all those in the above average disease resistance is a kind of a downfall, but uh, yeah, he definitely won't be the stone crafter um, he has the stats to be the miner uh, but the record keeping and mining don't go that well together mm, yeah because I, I do want to do want to have a second miner uh, okay this fellow who I made the wood burner is also suited for that no did I no I didn't you Reader man, the butcher. I think you will be the miner. Yeah, and I think I will make this uh, Kivish fellow the record keeper, just like his skills say. And uh, he will go. He will go into um, into the military eventually. So let's take a look at who will be the stone crafter if that fellow won't do it. Who can? Oh wow, that's that's high. That's high creativity. Oh yeah, I think. Uh, oh right, this is the engraver. Okay, let's let's not make him. Um, oh nice focus. Yeah, good creativity. Good creativity. Okay. Uh, Alath, did I make you someone already? No, you will be my stone crafter. Because from here on out I will be creating stone crafts, so I'll have uh, something to trade with the traders uh, in addition to some of the food products I might get out of the farms. But most of those are going into, into the alcohol and uh, food that is eaten. Okay, so this fellow is a is the stone crafter. I now have a furnace operator. This fellow will be the wood burner. I have the miner. Uh, Kivish the clerk, eventual army man, will probably take over record keeping from the expedition leader who can then focus on being a manager and a mechanic. Well, I might even make this fellow my record keeper and a manager and let my expedition leader just be expedition leader to broker and uh, and the mechanic okay uh, then uh, some of these other things I want someone to take care of uh, I don't want my uh, expedition leader to be the butcher or tanner I haven't used that so much yet um, okay so you you were a stone crafter. Okay, that there's not much not much room to maneuver here. The cheese maker doesn't have any other tasks, so I will give to him some of these utility tasks. Again, uh, spreading these out to new dwarves when I get new dwarves. I will also uh, put some of uh, pressing and. Uh, Let's give milling here as well. I might might give these to other migrants as well. Mm, take the plant processing off from the brewer. Mm, you want a wood burner. You can be the backup butcher. Because butchery, butchery and tanning and those can easily be done without, uh, with uh, unskilled dwarf. They just take a little bit more time. Um, yeah, I think that is it. I don't want anyone to hunt yet. Uh, I will make someone a fisherman un unless I get some uh, fisher dwarves in the later waves. It's a good, good source of extra food. Just taking a look at here that I have, uh, everyone has something to do. The stone detailer will 
pretty much be hauling for now unless I give him something to engrave. So that's fine. And the same goes for the furnace operator and the wood burner and such. So they will be uh, quite a bit uh, hauling. The stone crafter will go busy with uh, with the crafts. Okay, let's commit these changes and uh, take a quick look at, uh, at the military. This one fellow had hammer skill, a couple of dodgers. Uh, the clerk also has armor user, shield user. And then uh, with this version of Dwarf Therapist we can see the rankings. Rankings for the military skills, who is strong, who is agile, who is tough. Yeah, this fellow is uh, very, very good for being a Marx Dwarf as well. Oh, I actually had a, this fellow who had a hunting, hunting skill uh, uh, and ambusher is also a, uh, has some marks dwarf skill, not highly, highly stats for it, but uh, okay. Quickly take a look at the social, social skills. The record keeper. I had one. Uh, sometimes you get a very skilled broker, and of course you. Uh, it is good that you make that dwarf the broker. The record keeping is not that uh, that important, but uh, it can help. And if you get someone with organizer skill, can take over the manager. But uh, I only got the record keeper guy. And in here I haven't really looked at these. What are these based off? Ah, right. Probably if the strength is very low, they can't can't use something. For example, these uh, these big weapons. Okay, right. I adjusted the labors. I went through them. I now have a furnace operator, a wood burner, a secondary miner, and a stone crafter. Those are the ones I want to set from the first first migrant wave with these initial dwarves. And I got some of the miscellaneous tasks away from the from the starting dwarves like plant processing and stuff like that. So I am good to go. In the next video, I'll be uh, continuing. My uh, two miners will uh, move from the bedrooms that are nearly done, I think, into creating my safe trade depot setup. I will uh, build the nest boxes to the, to the turkey room and um, When this trade depot is done, I will start thinking about uh, some uh, some mining for iron ores. But uh, that'll be a, that'll be a little while. And as said, the stone crafter will start cr creating some stone crafts for trading. But more on that in the next video. I uh, wanted this one to be about the migrants, on how I use dwarf therapists to go through them. And uh, that is especially important when in the upcoming years we might get waves of uh, 20, 30 or even 50 or uh, even 70, I think. But that's that's uh, quite rare. But anyway, something like 30, 40 dwarves. It's, uh, uh, without dwarf therapists you uh, you just can't manage them. All right. it's, it's stupid not to use dwarf therapists for that. Anyway, uh, I'll see you in the next video when uh, building of the fortress continues. Thanks for watching this one. Take care. Bye-bye.